welcome to MBS Show. I am your host, Norman Santo. Joining me today is Will. And then, in the far distance, I saw him riding on a pale horse, and his name was Death. Well, actually, that was his nickname. His real name was Francesco, but you know he liked going by Death because it's really hard to take seriously a man riding on a horse named Francesco. It's like, oh no, look out! It's Francesco. It, it doesn't have the same ring. <laughs> <laughs> well, Francesco. <laughs> okay, you got me there. I, I, I can't. I can't come back. I can't come back. <laughs> and also joining us today is Toilet Genesis. I may smell like smoke, but I have nothing to do with the fire down the road. I swear. Is that a promise? Maybe. <laughs> and also joining us is Starstream. I'm Star. <laughs> Hello. Well, everybody has cool intros except me. But coming to you this Saturday uh... from a live studio audience, it's Norman Sanzo. Sanzo! <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Yay! That's a lot of excitement. I expect. Uh, the theme song and have you walk down a high, walk down a walk down a light oh, flight of stairs or something. Oi. No, 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 no. We we, we don't want the YouTube boss here. Uh, but anywho, uh, full house, full house. I think it's been a while since we had a full house here. Uh, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be but fun. Norman, Norman. It, we can't be a full house. Uh, we need at least one more person. I mean, a, four, a full house, we need three of a kind and two of a kind. Right Right now we have, like, uh, pro- not even a four of a kind. We probably have two pair here. Well, two pairs of something is something. No, two <laughs> pairs means that we're going to have a bunch of upset apples on us because they're like, how dare you eat those pears? <laughs> uh, not even going to mention new episodes, but anywho. No, no, no spoilers. So... <laughs> Yeah. So, anywho, uh, let's start off the news with a bit of movie news. Um, the LMV movie is coming out this year, October to be exact. And I think it's October 6th, was it? No? Uh, yeah, I think it's October 6th. October 6th, but depending on the region. Oh, yeah. So, uh, October 6th, depending on the region. But till this date, there's no trailers. So, what's up with that? We're in... June, so we got July, August, September, October. Four months. Okay, well, four months off. Let's not count June. So July, October, September, three, three months. Three basically, months. three months of advertising. Because according to the article, what does the article say, Norman? Well, if you're interested in catching the trailer debut, <laughs> you you have to sit through Despicable Me Three. So we gotta sit through more minions. I'll do it. I will ah. do it. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, good on you, man. Oh, talking about, um, movies that we kind of don't want to watch. How was Transformers? Oh! <laughs> Alright. So. I'll, I'll let him say because I'm too traumatized. It is the most glorious train wreck of a movie and the only reason to see it is just to watch and see how much of a train wreck it is in person. It's the only reason to watch it is just to witness how horrendously bad this movie is and how much they screwed up. The pacing is just all over the dang place, man. I heard a comparison by somebody else saying, have you watched a trailer for this movie? Now imagine a bunch of those trailers back to back to back to back to back. That's the whole movie. So basically, they're pulling uh, Batman versus Superman, then. S- sort of, b- b- basically, and and obviously, you don't come to a Michael Bay film for the story. It's just even more prevalent in this that the guy is great at action scenes sometimes, but seriously, the only people who are really entertained by this movie are mindless schlocks. It definitely did not feel like a Michael Bay film, and it didn't feel like it fit in with the Transformers films that they had made up to this point. Really? Yeah, it is absolutely the worst, and it just feels like it ignores a lot of the uh, established lore and context that the other films put out there. Lore in a Michael Bay Transformers. <laughs> Even the one with Marky Mark? Yes. Yep. Like, yeah. Really? Mark Wahlberg has walked out on the project. He was supposed to do three films. He has decided after this film that he, he he's done with it. And even Michael Bay has wow. reportedly turned around and said he won't make another one, or he won't direct another one until they come up with a good story. Which will be never, thank God. 
But no, no, Norman, the best part about this movie was the opening beginning in the medieval fantasy <laughs> setting. Well, in the in the in the Knights of the Round Table, that you know the whole Knights source uh-huh. uh-huh. Arthurian legend. Yeah, the Arthurian legend. That was actually the coolest part of the whole movie. But somehow, because it's Michael Bay, they got explosions in medieval times. <laughs> hey, you don't think they can pull it off, but nope, there's explosions. Uh, okay. Melon was great, wonder, though. Though. Melon was fantastic. Oh, Did anyone yeah. count how many explosions? Oh, God, no. no, no. You, but, uh, we will you. let CinemaSins count them for us. <laughs> for every dollar, you, if you have to put a, a dollar in the tip jar for every time an explosion happens, you'll go broke. I go broke if a single explosion happened. <laughs> uh, okay, anyway, back onto the ponies. Well, um, Transformers is another Hasbro product, so yay. So that's our little review for that movie that I might not watch. <laughs> oh, no, go watch, watch it. Watch it. I, I I I recommend people to watch it just to see how horrendously bad it is. I would oh say don't just pirate it. No, don't. No, no pirate it. This, this is definitely one of those bad movies that is worth watching it on the big screen because you're just going to be don't, in don't shock and awe the whole time. Movie. I'd rather pay to see it in cinema than pay like three times the price to own the DVD. <laughs> no, the thing is, whenever um, you want to go to see something in the theaters, you're always going to want to get concessions. You know they're overpriced. You know they're very undervalued. And you know they're not that great. But the thing is, you want to munch on something. And if you dare sneak anything in, heaven help you if they catch you. <laughs> oh. Okay, okay, okay. But anyway, back on to ponies. ponies. Yeah. So anyway, uh, <laughs> back on to ponies. But I got to talk about this pick up me tree. Uh, yeah. Anywho, that movie there is something you have to watch if you want to watch the trailers. But if the trailer comes out, be sure to wait a bit, and it'll probably end up on uh, YouTube on the Hasbro official page or something like that. Or you'll see someone's phone recording of it where they record in vertical. Oh, wow, why, why, why? And all the reviewers oh. start to break down all the things that we see in the trailer. <laughs> oh, wow, I, I can't wait for that scene. I, I can't wait for people to speculate and uh, theorize and stuff like, like You see yeah, this one anyway. frame in this one corner, there's this fanon character in the background. See, I knew it's confirmed. <laughs> uh, but let's move things along and from one movie news to the other... Joe Bellerin, writer for the movie, recently did an AMA on Reddit. And here are his responses. But <clears throat> instead of reading all of his responses, let's pick the pony one. Because pony show and whatnot. Will, you want to be Bellerin here? You want me to just say the answers then? Yeah, I, I'll ask the question, you'll be Bellerin. Alright, I have no idea how Bellerin sounds, so <coughs> you guys just name a crazy accent and I'll run with it. American. <laughs> Okay, there are multiple and crazy American <laughs> accents, so um, I could go. Which one French. do you want? North? There's no French American accent. <laughs> you think you can have French French. Canadians? They're it, stupid it, enough to believe they are French. New Orleans. <laughs> New Orleans? I don't know much about New Orleans, man. No, I really do not. Isn't it? Orleans. Sounds more like Southern style. Oh, well. but anywho. Fine, fine. Uh, we'll, just, we'll, we'll just run with it. I'll pick something random. <laughs> Start a question, uh, Norman. <laughs> uh, how did you get roped into doing a movie for an established universe like My Little Pony? Oh, well, I had a great written deal of animation and Hasbro liked my writing. But I the adventure stuff. I was a fan of the show, and so when they asked me to meet and discuss, uh, winning hooves are blazing. <laughs> nice. That is great. So, second <laughs> <laughs> Second question is, I need to know, will there be horse puns? The fandom thrives on horse puns. It's the only thing that keep us stable. Arr, non-stop. They be the main event. <laughs> nice. <clears throat> Did you coordinate the movie story element with the showrunners much? Especially in recent seasons, there's been a lot of reference to events and characters from previous episodes. It'd be nice to see some cross-reference between show and movie. Oh, the producers are very well aware of the timeline when I was working on it. We all wanted the movie to fit within the show as much as possible so the movie wouldn't feel too randomly out of place within the Ponyverse. Mm. <laughs> 
<laughs> Last question, pony related is: Do you plan Starlight to be the a main part of the movie? And if so, do you plan to do something to fix her character and make her less of a Mary Sue? Starlight ain't no Mary Sue. That's what Mr. T says. And you better believe it when Mr. T says that. <laughs> Fool. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> uh, well, those are the pony questions. And if you're interested, go ahead and um, look into the show notes for more. Because um, looking through here, there are few what you call this news that are really really interesting and from the answers here like starlight here that's interesting i, I wonder if she's going to be in it or not and um, i guess she'll just have a background role or maybe she'll just get like a mention who knows <laughs> although it would be funny what would be funny is if they actually show the equestria girls portal and sunset shiver sticks her head out like hey need help and they just push her back in <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Uh, but what about you two guys? Uh, you've been quiet for a bit. I just think if the starlight appears in the movie, it's going to be a case of the main six and Spike go to leave, and Twilight turns around and goes, don't wreck my stuff, and then leaves. <laughs> so I just get told to not break anything and gets left behind. Assuming it is means- even in the Ponyverse at that point. Uh, well, we are true to that. Do you think that the special that they did recently where Starlight just moves to the human world is just like a good way to brush her out of the story? No, no, she's just just visiting. Remember they said only for a couple days she can visit and whatnot. She, she's gonna be back. But, uh, no, no, I (laughs) I, I just thought, I just thought, I know exactly what they're gonna do. Cause Spike is coming with her. I know what they're gonna do with Starlight Glimmer. They're gonna be like, okay, Starlight, while we go off on this massive adventure, it's up to you to watch Equestria. You can count on me. And then when they're all back, it's like everything's in chaos. <laughs> oh god, no. Rather than in chaos, it's like, she's asking, hey, where is everyone? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they come back and everything's better than it was before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. no, that, that, Ooh, budget. I, no, what, 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 uh, what, uh, Angel said is even a better idea. Have her be an ending credits gag. Or like she just walks in and is like, did I miss something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but if you guys can't afford the movie tickets and concession because somehow if you go to a movie, you need to buy the concession. So if you can't afford that, what better way than to take the comic book adaptation of it? <laughs> I just wear a gigantic uh, hoodie and uh, stuff a bunch of tacos into the pouch. <laughs> yeah, and pretend that you didn't bring anything in. Hey, as long as you take the garbage with you, they'll never find out. <laughs> true that, true that. But anywho, um, if you guys can afford it, there's the comic version of the movie. So... Um, remember a while back where, I don't think we reported on this, but a while back in EQD, there's going to be some kind of comic preview, not really preview, but, uh, prequel. Yes. So there's going to be a lot of comic prequel to the movie. And that makes sense because there's a comic version of the movie. So I- I'm not 100% sure how this is going to look like. It could be, um, screenshots from the movie in comic form. Or something drawn by the IDW artist. My guess, just to make more money, they'll just take screenshots and just frame it into panels. Which can either be extremely Aww. lazy if they do it lazy, or really good if they do it in a nice way. But if they literally just do screenshot, screenshot, screenshot with speech bubbles, expect a hackney job. But who knows? We have no idea. Yeah. True, true. Um, I'm double checking here and it doesn't say who the comic publisher is. Um, probably it does, but I don't see. It says TPBFC. That's strange. But anywho, the book is going to be $8. How is that? Cheaper than a movie ticket or almost the same? Actually, it depends where you go and if it's a matinee, which means uh, something before uh, 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock or whatever. Hmm, all right. I do know for my local movie theater, it uh, a matinee is $6.00. And the popcorn is $7 for a small. Oh, wow. Oh, well, for a small, you see. That's very, very disappointing. Oh, and it's not even more disappointing. It's actually, it's like only like 20 ounces. And when you consider how much 20 ounces is of popcorn, that's not a lot. Ooh, oh, don't, wow. don't worry. You get one free refill that you have to leave the theater to get. Ah! No! 
How about you guys? Do you guys have to pay much for uh, movie theaters in your area? I have to pay a lot for everything in my area. <laughs> this is a very expensive country to live in. <laughs> oh wow! What about you, uh, Star? Any? What's this? Well, my case is that uh, if you talk about, well, I'm not sure how you want to talk about this, but uh, in my case, uh, it's less than ten sing dollar. Less than ten sing dollar. Ten sing dollar is equal to about well, ten American dollars, more or less. Wow, not bad. And that is with the concession, by the way. Well, as for me, uh, let's see. I think a ticket is about fifteen bucks, probably, uh, depending on what I get. And since there's a combo where I can get two tickets and one large popcorn and two drinks for the price of about twenty-two bucks, so that's kind of affordable. And remember, uh, you want to convert it to your American dollars. That's uh, divided by four. Uh, so I'm looking at the artist for who's doing the what you call this um, adaptation, and it says various artists, um, writers is Lauren Faust, Rita, his uh, Hasio, Megan McCartney, uh, Mike Vogel. It doesn't say anything else. Like uh, various artists and contributors. Yeah. So yeah. Um. It looks like uh, the book is not going to be a screenshot book. So that's good. Mm-hmm. Who knows? <clears throat> it will be interesting to see, nonetheless. And you know, eight bucks for that many pages ain't too bad. True. True. It's been a while since I bought uh, any adaptation movie thingy. So this is going to be interesting. And. Since we're talking about books, and recently BookCon happened, ponies. <laughs> How? Ponies were at BookCon. Twilight. Well, is obviously, happy? they had to have Twilight there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Twilight is the main star for that one there. So, yay! Uh, so, the illustrious Q from EQD recently went to BookCon. I hope I got it right. And he took a lot of pictures there. And from what I've seen... The place is really, really pimped out for kids. And looking at the pictures here, it is heaven. It's heavenly for people who like books. And just looking at the whole place, it's fun. A big pile of book stacks from what it looks like the Journal of the Two Sisters to something I never seen before. What's that? Uh, Equestria Girls. Oh yeah, like basically every, every book from the little brown book series to, you know what? It's a lot of books. And they even had Tom Zeller there, if I'm not mistaken. Ah, Tony Fleece. He had Tony Fleece there drawing art for, for the panel. Or I'm not sure panel. What did he do there for the event? Yeah, let's go for event. Event's nice. They even captured it on... They even posted on the screen where they <laughs> show him drawing life and whatnot. And it looks cool. It looks really, really cool. Very stylish. Yeah, I like those. I like those cubes, those cube pillows. Just thinking, man. If, if you we, want to take one of them, yeah, we could turn them into giant uh, pillow dice. Yeah, uh, and they have movie posters there too. That's cool. And it's signed. You got Mike Vogel, Andrew Lipman, Tabitha Saint Germain, Tara Strong. Hmm. Book card. Actually. So that was a con all about books, right? Uh Uh-huh. I want to go to it. I wonder if Jim Butcher was there. I would have killed it. I would would have totally gone there if he was. Probably. But anywho, uh, BookCon looks like a success and Hasbro did um, stuff that was pretty cool too. So, yay. There's a wall of drawings there. um, Blank canvas for people to draw. And some... Yeah. And some kid drew, uh, what you call this, uh, Rainbow Dash in pink. So, yeah, that's, that's interesting. Well, hey, you know, maybe she's just trying to be like her great ancestor, Firefly. <laughs> yeah, probably. And Rarity in blue too, wow, okay. Kids, you're really, really imaginative. Uh, so, <laughs> I got no idea how to segue to the next one, but, do you guys play video games? Oh, oh I, I know how to segue this. I know how to segue this. Uh, all right. Okay. <clears throat> all right. 
So everyone yeah. loves being creative with books and how much they open a world to you. Well, being cur- creative also can happen. And okay, damn it, this is a lot harder than I thought. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, but anywho, uh, you, you guys remember way back when where there's this one pony who plays video games a lot. Ah, uh, yes. Ah, oh, yeah, button mash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And somehow Hasbro didn't really do much with him. They added him back to the show, but with a different tone of color, if I remember right, from the TV. But they never really gave him a name, and he didn't really speak. So, there's a mobile game. And you know how mobile games are. They need to name every character. And guess what his character name is? Button Mash. I know. They canonized the fandom name. They stole our stuff. Hey, no, <laughs> no, no. Revenge no. for Jan Animations. <laughs> no, no, no. Jan Animations will we never, never have revenge until there's blood spilt on the ground. We never own anything. We just help them with naming characters. Remember Lyra Heartstrings? I thought she was already named that. <laughs> No, um, her name was, well, Hasbro decided to name her Heartstrings, but the fans said, nah, 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 we don't like Heartstrings. And to compromise, they added both of them together, like her Heartstrings. And Bonbon, bon, that's the creative one. Her name in the fandom was Bonbon, bon, but her official name is Sweetie Drops? Yeah, something like that. Mm-hmm. Sure, yeah. Yeah, special so that... agent Sweetie Drops. Yeah, so they did the whole double name thing, which they did the same thing for Lyra, where her name was Heartstrings, and now it's Lyra. Well, Lyra Heartstrings did it. Too. There we go. Now, all they need to do yeah. to totally appease fans is finally have vinyl talk and just get no whacking on the phone. Just hire her. <laughs> <laughs> you can pay have, her penis, like, and I'm pretty sure she'd the, do it. That's the problem, though. I heard a while back that they had actually apparently already asked Nowakin to be Vinyl Scratch, but one of the stipulations was they wouldn't be able to do Vinyl Scratch uh, as... In any other fandom yeah, work. Yeah, as fandom work. So it was turned uh, down. But that's what I heard. I, I can't say whether or not this is true off the top of my head. Okay, pardon me if I don't really know her activity, but I don't think she's really done much. She's moved on to other things. So yeah. it's, it's kind of like a missed opportunity. I mean, if you're never going to do it again, then you might as well do it, you know? <laughs> Sure. Well, in all honesty, what she did there was the right thing to do, to turn it down. Because if she... Okay, basically she is a professional voice actor. She That's kind of her bread and butter. And if anyone is willing... like Let's just say uh, Gen Animation is doing another vinyl video and wants her to play the role of vinyl. And if she did do the voice for the official, she won't be able to do it for the fandom anymore. So she's leaving that gate open, and I do like how Hasbro is handling the whole not vinyl talking kind of thing. It makes things very interesting for her character. Like, she's kind of the mute, but not really. Every time she's trying to talk, nobody really gives her a chance. Like Maggie Simpson, yay. Yeah, they try to do the same thing with Derby. I'm, I'm, no, 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 wait, don't hit me! Oh, her name is Muffins now. Officially, her name is Muffins. <laughs> Yeah, her name's Muffins. I mean, what, what are you guys talking about? That's her name in the title and in the credits. And I know what you're getting so angry about. It's always a better name. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And Star, what do you think? Ain't much I can say about it, though. <laughs> because to be honest, I still remember there was another person who actually could play vinyl scratch voice. I do remember that too. But I think Noah King is kind of the canon or the fan favorite. Yeah. There was one I couldn't remember anymore. She was the one who played for the vinyl scratch tapes. Yeah, yeah, that was a good one too. Yeah. Oh well. Anywho. Or oh, even better, maybe we, maybe we should just get her a really pot. Okay. We should get um, Fran Drescher. Yeah, no. <laughs> yes. No. That's for a people, great, that's a great for idea. people, <laughs> for people who are too young to know who Fran Drescher is, go Google it. You'll be. Impress, or you'll be horrified. I don't know. Her oh, sitcom I gotta tell you, this is the greatest jam ever. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, Will, I, I, oh, I think you have news, right? All oh, right, right. I, I have news to share with us too, which is not related at all to. 
Okay, so our own news. Um, this one was posted on the less reputable pony news site, Horse News, where you go for all your drama. But yes. now many of you may know of the artist uh, Pencils, who you may know of his popular fan comic called Anon Pie Adventures. And you may have also known him as he's ta- he lurks on MLP, the MLP board of 4chan a lot. And uh, his, his given name is Tony uh, Cusitio. No, Cusisto. Cusisto. Tony Cusisto. There we go. Okay. But anyway, he's actually uh, created... For episode number 59 of the IDW comic, he's created an alternate uh, cover that's going to be appear on there, and he may be actually doing art for future comics as well. And this is all speculation or confirmation? Uh, confirmation. That Well, it's confirmation that he's done the cover, but it's uh, speculation like he he's in talks with doing future stuff future comics, like actually doing the art for the comics, not just covers, but the actual art for the comics in future, sometime probably in 2018. Yeah, in 2018, he will be officially joining the ranks of IDW's MLP artist and doing full issues in 2018. And, okay, uh, need to air out a few things. Um, they mod block for Anon Pie. Uh, Tony, was it? Yeah, t- uh, Tony Cusisto. Cusisto. Yeah, because he's still here. He's no regular Joe Schmo from DeviantArt. Like, he's actually a professional comic book guy, oh, right? He is a professional comic book artist, but he is a fan of MLP. Mm. Yeah, that's, I mean, if he mm. wasn't a fan, why would he create this gigantic fan comic, you know? True. No, but he is, a, he is a professional comic artist, though. He's been doing stuff professionally for a couple of years, and it shows in his craft. I mean, the guy's line art is a drool at it. It's the reason I watch his Anon <laughs> yeah. Pies adventures is just like... His backgrounds, oh! Mm-hmm. And I recently take a look-see at his, whatchamacallit, uh, Tumblr page. And yeah, his art here is really, really um, amazing. There's, uh, I'm, I'm just going to take a look-see, like, the tag is APA, and it shows some bald guy with sunset. And the details here is really, really beautiful like it's wow i was looking at the the pictures on the article <laughs> uh you should uh, click on the blue link like um, straight to his page so you can get a ah, better look yeah i see it <clears throat> but still um just looking at some of his other works like uh what you call this the star trek thingy it looks good he has an interesting way of coloring and perspective yeah probably what he'll be doing i mean this is just guests at work, he'll probably just be doing the line art and, and the, the, the sketching and the line art, and they may have a colorist. That's usually how the comics go. Yeah, colorist usually goes to uh, Heather Brickle, so that seems to be the standard. So, anywho, it's it's good to know that a fan... Um, well, I won't say fan guy, but... It's good to know that we'll be getting new blood for the comics soon enough. Yeah, new blood that's really highly talented. I mean, and someone who's already a fan of ponies to begin with. That's that's the best thing you can have, is have someone who has a love for the craft already get into it. Yep, true, true. That, that, that's the true thing for any fan comic. Like, um, you can really tell the difference between Star Trek uh, comic books, which ones are fans of the uh, of Star Trek and which ones aren't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but anywho... Let's head on to the next topic. And next topic is going to be what have we been doing with our weeks? So let's see. Uh, Will, what have you been doing, man? Yeah, you know what? You've heard enough about me. I'd rather hear what these guys have been up to first. Uh, true that, true that. So why? Besides the Transformer movie, what have you been doing? Uh, let's see. Uh, sleeping a lot. Uh, I recently downloaded and marathoned the heck out of an anime called Buso Shoujo Machiavellianism. What? It yeah. It, also known as Armed Girls Machiavellianism. I it's a really long and hard word to pronounce, but I'm getting the hang of it. <laughs> I don't know what it means. <laughs> I assume it means something like academy or whatever. It's about a guy, a delinquent male student, who gets sent to a school where all the girls are armed with batons and the top girls are all armed with actual weapons because all the delinquent boys are sent there to be corrected by the, uh, the student body of this 
the formerly all girls school. Wait, is this the one where there is a Chesty Larue kind of character with uh, with blonde glasses kind of character? Uh, there's a couple blonde characters, but they don't wear glasses. I'm trying to remember because I think I kind of know. How did you mention the anime title again? Buso Shoujo Machiavellianism, which I just looked up what it means. Machiavellianism definition. Let's. Uh, well, says your arm girls, um, mecha, mecha, uh, you know, I can't say the word. But nah, it's not the one, it's not the one I'm thinking about. Ah, uh, okay. But yeah, but this, All right. this right. was a great anime. I kinda ended up until, I was watching it until 9.30 in the morning, the, the night I started watching it. Oh wow. And how many seasons are there? It's you season have? one, it's only had its final episode air earlier this week. Oh, so I've watched, wow. the, the whole thing's only just finished airing. So the only way to get it is, uh, the Australian way, which we, I will not promote. <laughs> Did you alright you then? But it, it was fantastic. Absolutely loved it. I've also been watching the second season of an anime, uh, more locally known as Seikano, which is about a guy, it's a sort of a horror, harem rom-com style show about a guy who's Surrounded by chicks who are all his team to help him make a video game. Oh, I kind of remember that. You've been watching a lot of anime, haven't you? Oh, yeah, yeah. I've also been watching Renai Bokun, which is a comedy, mostly comedy focused, uh, harem rom-com anime about a guy who gets, who gets locked into like a, a harem romance relationship by an idiot Cupid angel. <laughs> Uh, um, and as a result of the angel also locking herself into this harem, he gets locked into the oh. fact that he's immortal, so his Yandia girlfriend keeps stabbing him, <laughs> and he has to help the angel do her job of matching people up to be <clears throat> romantic pairs. Oh, God. Oh, so it's a uh, harem comedy where the goal is to actually get rid of the harmon, harm. Uh, they, they sort of just get stuck with it. They can't actually undo it because it part of, it uses a thing called a love note. But it, the Cupid's job is to literally just go, okay, these two people, we put the, both their names into the love note or love device. Bam, they are a couple. Well, you have death note, now you have the love note. People, we have advance. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's a sort of, it's a fairly average anime. It has its moments, but. Fairly average. I've just been watching it because it's not bad enough to drop. Actually, that gives me an idea. Now we've had a Death Note. Now we have Love Note. What we need now is Pizza Note. You write someone's name in there, and they get a pizza. Oh, man. Yo! You just have the owner's name in it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, so, Star, what about you? What have you been doing? Oh, man. A lot have been going on, I'm- I just been uh, what you call it? Got into reading Chinese novel for some reason. <laughs> what really? Yeah, it's a translated Chinese novel. It was like oh, oh okay. okay. It was like okay. Well, yeah, a lot of stuff I've been reading. I was like okay. So what's the story about? Uh, one of them was I was reading is about uh, it's about cooking. <laughs> cooking, all right. Yeah, it's about cooking. Uh, it's, this guy he was like it's just a very normal. Uh, he was like, and then after that, somehow in his brain, it was, something told him to, like, there was suddenly a program appear out of nowhere that just asked him, um, that the system asked him to become a cooking god or something. <laughs> okay. And so basically, wh- whatever he do, he was just like, oh, it would just, the system would just do a mission and says, uh, your first mission is that you go and register your shop and open a restaurant yourself and when he did that and apparently the system provide everything for the system and all the ingredients that he get was all the top tier among the top tier ingredients and the first thing that he learned how to cook was to cook fried rice uh egg fried rice <laughs> wait 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 is this uh, I, I is this modern day or traditional way back in the chinese day uh, it's a modern day one there's a traditional oh, okay. one also yeah, because I think I remember watching an anime called, well, uh, Direct Translation is Cooking Master Boy. Yeah. That's why I remember, but. Yeah. It, it almost sounded the same, yeah, but still. 
What else? What else, man? What else? Uh, well, I do remember that you have something huge at home. Yes, recently I just. Well, I I actually bought something off uh, Etsy, and I finally got it. It's my first life size uh, Fluttershy plush, which I'm so happy. I finally got it. <laughs> life size, like okay, um, <coughs> life size is debatable. Yes. but it's huge, right? Yes, it's quite huge. <laughs> it in tops of. Talking about the, from the tip of the hooves all the way to the tail, is about 47 inch. <laughs> that is big. Yeah, that is, that is big. big. It's quite nice. I got it, <sighs> I only got it for like 250 US dollar. Well, minus the shipping. Mm. Because we, still. But coming in with the wow. shipping is about 65 US dollar. But still, talking about it, it's a good price. Wow. Alright, alright. <laughs> Uh, I I wish I had that money for plush, but yeah, I don't. Yeah. Sad. And I also been uh well recently because my brother, I uh, I don't know what got it into him and he asked me oh you, capital I was like B I was like I'll pass you my credit card and you go by switch I was like what <laughs> what <laughs> yeah so wait your brother trusted you to go buy a switch with his card yes pretty much. Wow. So did you buy the Switch, everything, including, like, buy almost everything, including accessories, games, and whatnot? Well, I only buy the major ones, like, the ones that I know that it's gonna be worth it. Like, uh, I was like, I asked about the bundle, and they say, oh, we will be giving, uh, one Legend of Zelda, and then one Skylanders, the whole package for free, and also oh, three wow. Amiibos. I was like, Okay, I'll take that. But sad thing is only a month of warranty, but overall it's still a very good price. And after that I got, oh. I got two other games, uh, this guy of five and Mario Kart 8. And then. Oh wow, Mario Kart 8 worth it. Yep. And after that, uh, I, and then I get the, <laughs> what you call it, the Switch Controller Pro, and that's been great. Oh man. Wow. I played a little bit of Breath of the Wild when I was at a friend's. And oh gosh. On the Wii U or the Switch? On the Switch. And oh, I don't have a Wii U or a Switch. And I, if I'm going to get... Oh, you said your friend. I just want to buy a Switch now and that game. Just for that game alone. <laughs> <laughs> and I know yeah. it's a terrible idea, but... Oh. How, how much is it for you, Wills? Like, feasibly? Okay, if I, I wanted to get the, the, the console, it's going to be 300 bucks plus tax. If I wanted to get the game, it's going to be 60 plus tax. Yeah, that's just if I wanted the console in the game. Mm. Wait, do they have a bundle? Oh, there is. There are bundles and whatnot, and it'd be like three fifty or something, you know, and it includes the DLC and whatnot. But the thing is, though, finding a place that stocks it, they're still out of stock in most of the areas around me. It's like, yeah, really? we can put no. you on a call list. No, seriously, there people are still having trouble getting them. Yep. Even even Nintendo wow. themselves have said that it's not just in USA, it's in Europe and Japan. They all have shortages. This it's like as soon as the shipment went on, as soon as they got the stock, it was snatched off immediately. Well, no, this gives me an idea to buy one and sell off to people. <laughs> you you could actually do that. And pro- well, you you probably now you won't be able to market up as much because there's more supply out there. But people were literally selling them for double the price. On eBay, and they were going quick. Uh, I I won't double the price. I'll probably get ten percent off the original price just to get a ten percent back. But still, that's <laughs> something. I, I I'm not that mean. I just want to get some extra cash. Oh come on! You gotta think like an American. You gotta think like a capitalist. Make money off those stupid uh, fools. Nah, no, I don't want to be scalpers. Ugh. But anywho, so Will's, what about you? Persona Five is taken my entire life that that's that's what i've been up to this past week is nothing but persona 5 i already have 80 plus hours on this thing i noticed that when i was playing some street fighter 5 just to see you playing persona 5 <laughs> yeah man it's um it's a dang fun game i kind of i kind of wish morgana was my cat <laughs> i'd love having a sassy cat that talks back to me well and also force you to go to sleep <laughs> All those game code reminds me. At gunpoint, it forces you to go to sleep at gunpoint. No, you want to go to sleep. Go to sleep, dang it! Sleeping dogs. But I didn't do anything. I, I I just went and visited my friends. Yeah, and now you're tired. No, I'm not. Yes, sleep. You are tired. Sleep or else. 
<laughs> you are. Uh, well, no. No wonder you have twelve hours sleep. <laughs> but, uh, all the same talk has just reminded me. Oh yeah, I lost basically the whole weekend and screwed my normal sleeping pattern entirely. Just screwed it up because I also now have a new game, Horizon Zero Dawn. Completely forgot about it in my excitement about anime. That last weekend, I was up till five in the morning every morning for like three or four nights in a row, just playing Horizon Zero Dawn. Because my mate gave me a copy that he bought, not remembering that he already owned a copy of the game. Oh wow. Yeah, so he showed up early for D&D on the weekend, and he goes, did I get you anything for your birthday? And I'm like, no. He goes, did I get you anything for Christmas? I go, no. He goes, okay, those two plushies I bought you, they're now your Christmas present. He just, <laughs> present. He just hands, it to, hands me a copy of the game. I'm like, okay, this is random. He goes, yeah. I went to the shops, and it was half off on the price, so that's like from a $90 game now to 45 and then the cash, uh, cash, cashier girl convinced me to convince her to lower the price even more down to like 34 bucks, which is r- super cheap <laughs> for a game from a store here. So he bought it. Then he got home and realized that he had another copy of the game sitting right on top of his PlayStation. <laughs> but yeah, I lost so much time on the weekend just playing that. And I didn't, I completely forgot about it in my excitement over anime until these two mentioned video games. <laughs> oh, Horizon. Oh. Yeah, wow. Horizon is great, actually, man. Um, I, I know there's a DLC coming out for it, which does seem kind of interesting, but as a new IP and in a new game, it, it, it it's a great new IP. It, it's just really great. All right. Yeah. And as for me, well, okay, besides Overwatch Payday, I, I, I've been reading a lot of fan fiction. Oh, no. Oh, no. Do tell. Oh, yeah. Um, I've been reading, well, two stories by the same author, Tethered Angel. And one is called Sisterhood, starring Sonata Das, Arya Blaze, well, basically the Dazzling and the main seven Equestria Girls. And it's something to do with the Sisterhood Social in that world, blah, blah, blah. It's a really fun story. And it's sequel, Neighbors, where Sunset Shimmer moves to the same apartment that these three are staying. So, Hijinx Since You is very fun. It's, it's a very fun story, and I do recommend people reading it, just because it's fun. Really fun. But other than that, uh, that's about it, really. Mm. You've been playing Overwatch. Did you get a chance to try the new Lunar Colony m- uh, uh, map? I have, I have. And honestly, the new map itself is interesting. Uh, Zero G mode is fun for the very beginning but it gets tiresome when it, when you really start playing it it's how do you put this it's not pure zero g like the guarantee it, it, has been it, turned down g. to yeah it's low g but it's not as fun as you think oh i got i gotta love it because it makes some characters a lot more viable than you think for example torbjorn's um turret now becomes your worst nightmare because you're stuck moving slowly through the air as it pelts you with bullets <laughs> yeah, that's one thing. But the also the other thing is when you're playing somebody like McCree, where you need to have a stable shot. So it's like, oh no, this is not good. Um, I just jump and I can't land. Or if you're playing um Winston, <laughs> uh, his <laughs> monkey jump thing is far. Actually, it's, 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 it's great. It's great for Symmetra too. It's like, haha, try and jump away now, fools. Now you'll constantly be on my beam of death. <laughs> oh, and, but and, one, and one Genjis thing are just like, it's like I have my triple jump back. <laughs> oh, he had a triple jump? Yeah, he had a triple jump in the beta. Oh, in the, I oh, really now? Oh, I don't, didn't use Genji back then. <laughs> Neither did I. I just had to shoot at him. That was so annoying. <laughs> in the beta, Bastion had a Reinhardt shield. Uh, oh, I remember that. I remember that. That, that, ugh. <laughs> that was night, that was nightmarish. Mm-hmm. But still, um, right now, the new update that came out changed the hero's performance a bit. Um, Roadhog has uh one more ammo in the clip, so meaning from four to five. And his 
hitbox for headshots has been lowered, but his damage output has been lowered too. So yeah, not viable as before, but still interesting. Oh wait, but Roadhog got a nerf in damage. Yep, that explains why I wasn't able to one shot so many people before. Yep, huge. Um, a huge nerf. So his playstyle has changed a lot. Also, Reaper has been increased. When you eliminate a uh, opponent, you he doesn't drop spirit orbs anymore. Instead, now every time you damage a hero, you'll take twenty percent life back. Oh, so it's your da- You do more damage. Ah, what, you know what that means, though. That means now he'll be much more viable in one v one fights because you'll want to constantly hit people with it, not having mm-hmm. to get a bonus of a health at the end. It's now more so he's better at trades. Close well, technically, trade. he's a vampire then. So still much fun, much fun. <clears throat> So, well, that's Overwatch update. <laughs> but anyway, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can send it to the MBS show at gmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS show. And as for me, I am at Norman Sanzo. Wheels, where can the good people find you? Uh, well, if you want to find my art, you can find me at wilson.dwinner.com. If you want to find my writings, you can find me at filmfiction.net slash wilson. And if you want to find me rambling about whatever, Find me on Twitter at Willison. Alrighty then, alrighty then. And also, uh, Twy, what about you? Uh, you can find me as Double Point Productions on Facebook and, uh, YouTube. Uh, I'm under, on, on Twitter, I'm under at midnight underscore point. And I'm Twilight Genesis on Film Fiction, which I haven't updated in like half a year. And on DeviantArt as well. Alrighty then. And star people find you. And they can find me at Angelic or XX on my Deviant Art, where I just recently post the double shy picture. Nice, nice. Oh, you you saying XX at the back of your name reminds me of the Xbox One X. Oh God! It sounds like an edgy te- preteen during his um, younger days when he's using a username like um, X uh, Sephiroth X. You remember those kind of uh, usernames? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, can, I remember those. Yep. So basically, the Xbox One X is just Box One. <laughs> it feels wrong also in, when I hear the name. I was like, okay, why do they name this? It feels not just edgy. It also feels kind of, you know. <laughs> They're going to have a problem with sales just because it's going to be all those parents is like, yeah, one of the Xbox is like, well, we don't sell Xbox. Oh, the the X, the new, the first one, the the new first one. <laughs> nah, the, the the more confusing part is, have you ever noticed the word X and S sound the same? So just imagine any dad or mom trying to buy uh, an Xbox for their kids. So it's like, um, do you have the Xbox One X? Oh, you mean the Xbox One S? Yeah, here it is. Oh, yeah, it, does this play the good games? Yeah, it does. <laughs> so they went home and, oh, um, this is the Xbox One X. So it's like, what's the difference? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's gonna create a lot hmm. of confusion from that. I'm not actually, sure. Actually, I got a better, I got a better beginning to what Norman just said. Xbox, Xbox 360, Xbox One X, and, uh, mm-hmm. PS4 Pro, Xbox One X. What's the difference? They're both not computers. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But I'm not sure though, uh, because Xbox One X has challenged the PC market somehow. How? It hasn't. Anyone who says it has is, is an idiot and has never bought a computer themselves. Well, I own a very beefy PC. I'm not sure that counts. <laughs> I think the reason why I said that was because it has a liquid vapor chamber for, for the, the <laughs> GPU cooling. Great, so yeah, it's got I a cooling it's system. For first, yeah, it's for the first for the console. Something the Xbox 360 needed, considering how many of those melted. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But in all honesty, you could mod that water cooling system into a console if you really want to. Yeah, yeah I, I, I've seen some of the cooling systems where... Oh, did you see the cooling system where a guy made a cooling system that was also an aquarium? I've seen it before, but, oh, but for what PC or uh, for a PC for a PC? I saw it. I, I've seen that one. Oh, that's yeah, amazing. It's, um, using oil, mineral oil, like liquid oil. Mineral. Yeah, mineral oil. Yeah, mineral oil. It's just like <laughs> we'll throw some crawfish in there and have a few bubbles in the old chest. 
<laughs> oh wow. That, that, uh, wow! But but uh, besides the point, uh, the MBS show PC talk show is going to be another show for another day. Uh, and also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on pontiflife.com. Links are in the show notes, and also please subscribe to our newest project, the MBS show review and discussion podcast, on iTunes and also Stitcher Radio. Over there, you will have. Me, Silver Quill, Sever Heart Song, and Guest of the Week talking about the My Little Pony episode, comics, movies, and also other random things like, here's a heads up for you guys at home who are interested, um, Superman vs. The Elite. We talk about that one, and that's pretty fun movie. Um, be sure to stick around to hear what we have to say. And if you want early access to that bit of review, you can do so at patreon.com. If... <coughs> All our supporters will get access to deleted content and early access to, well, the review and discussion podcast. Uh, it will be over at patreon.com slash MBS show. And I would like to thank the supporters. I would like to thank Nurkel Cat, Toilet Genesis, Nemdragatoria, Starstream, and also Master of Light. Thank you guys for the support. You have been really awesome. And anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. This is Starstream. <laughs> this is Twilight Genesis. And I was Will Eisen. And we'll go see you next week with another fun episode in the S show. See ya. To the low folks. Cheers. Bye.